The WNBA had a chance to set its finals today. And it's very simple. All the Liberty have to do is something they couldn't do the last time out, beat the Aces. However, the Liberty have completely had the Aces number if you're looking at it as a whole. Aces doing the hosting here. Game four of the semifinals. Aces looking to keep their three-peat hopes alive. That suit is fire. By the way, the Aces have won 12 straight postseason at, at games at home. Sabrina Ionescu coming off her terrible game. She makes it 8-3. Liberty then under pressure. Drains that. She had four points in her last game. One, two, three, four. That's it today. 12 points in the first quarter. It was 19-11 after one. We go to the second because that's how this works. Aces down three. Chelsea Gray off the stream. How about that from the point guard? The pass to Megan Gustafson. Aces cut it to one and Gray becomes the fourth player in WNBA history with 300 or more postseason assists. Then Alicia Clark, Clark off the Gray miss, gets it to Asia Wilson. The six point game. The nice Laney Hamilton gonna miss. Brianna Stewart is there, tips it once, tips it twice, gets it to drop. Liberty up three going into the break. In the fourth, it's 61 53. Courtney Vandersloot. Sabrina Ionescu is left wide open, and that is a three. She had 22, five of eight from three. Liberty up 11. Go ahead and now make it 14. Vandersloot kicks it out to Stewart, who kicks it out to a wide open John Quill Jones. Thebish, Jones, again, wide open. That'll do it. Liberty win. Moving on to the WNBA Finals. We don't have it every year. It's not the way this works. You don't get to flip a switch. It's the beautiful thing about sports, actually. The work and the commitment and the buy-in and the play hard and the want to and the will will always show up in the end. We talked a lot of smack last year. I'm sure they heard it, and they got to smack us this year. So um, for us, we will have a long off season. And for us, we will be back next year. And I'm sure the focus level will be very different. I can pretty much guarantee that. They've made us a better team. To do what they've done is not easy. Like, you know, we've we've gotten there and lost. They've gotten there and, and won twice. And it, it's a testament to their togetherness, um, their experience, how hard it is that they're um, wanting to go out there and be their best every night. And they've laid down the foundation and they continue to motivate everyone in the league to just want to be better and want to win championships. And so uh, we've always respected them. Um, we have the utmost respect for what they've been able to accomplish, what Becky's done here in a short amount of time. And, um, you know, thank them for helping us get continue to get better. And respect for Sabrina from the worst postseason performance of her career to this 22 points to lead the Liberty back to the WNBA Finals. They're there now for the sixth time. This was her third playoff game with five three pointers, and that is tied for the fourth most in WNBA history. Was Becky Hammond good there or what? She was so good. Wow. Links have and that son. kind of honesty from every coach, please. Exactly. Sign me up. Connecticut on the brink of elimination. Minnesota a win away from a trip to the WNBA Finals. You can make a great case. Nafisa Collier is the most complete player in the WNBA. She won Defensive Player of the Year this season, put up her third 25-10 and 10 game of these playoffs. Collier was 5 of 5 from the field, scored 14 points in the first half when the primary defender on her was Alyssa Thomas. Big time. Closing seconds of the half, Natisha Heidemann to beat the buzzer. The Lynx go into the half with momentum. They led 50 to 43. Midway through the third, here comes Connecticut, Dewana Bonner. Baseline J, she had 18 points, eight rebounds. Next Sun possession off the set inbound. Dijanae Carrington. One major part of this game that needs to be underscored. Connecticut shot just three of 20 from three-point range in game three. Much more accurate in game four. They were eight of 15 from deep. A total script flipped. And then a little bit later, the Sun in front by 10. Thomas Harris, she had a career postseason high, 20 points. A very physical and competitive series will go the distance. The Sun take game four, 92-82.
I think we have to get back to, you know, what got us in this position in the first place, which is our defense. Um, as Coach said, we're not happy with, you know, how we came out the last two games. Um, you know, our offense was able to lift us up last game, but um, when in, if that's not working, we have to rely on our defense, and it's not been good the last two games, so we have to go home and defend our home court. Um, we're both playing for our lives, so we have to play with that level of intensity. We feel like we had 20 more minutes to turn this around, or, and I don't think anybody in that locker room is ready to kind of go their separate ways. I mean, we just kind of buckle down. It's like, this is it, 20 minutes, and we're going to put it all out there and see what happens, and we won. <laughs> It was a furious comeback, and Alyssa Thomas refused to go quietly Sunday. Two rebounds shy of a triple-double. In fact, when it comes to facing elimination, few have come up as clutch as Thomas throughout her career. 11 career double-doubles when facing elimination, second most in W history behind only Candace Parker. L. Andrea have more. I'm L. Duncan alongside the incomparable Andrea Carter. One team takes care of business on the road, the other does not. Let's start with the earlier game between the Liberty and the Aces. The box score will tell you it was a blowout. That was not the case. Much tighter before the Liberty eventually pulled away. Your biggest takeaway from that one? Uh, prob oh, my goodness. My biggest takeaway? Yeah. Well, one, I think of the word response, right? Okay. Because the Liberty had to respond. Specifically, Sabrina Ionescu had to respond. Mm -hmm. The Aces came out in game three. Defensively, they were locked in. They held the Liberty to six points in the third quarter. How were the Liberty going to respond? Were the Liberty going to show that they are this team that has been building towards a championship all season long, that they are the team that's had the most continuity all season long? That's what I had my eye on, and that's what I saw. Sabrina Ionescu struggled in game three. Shane Holmes out with 12 points in the first right away. quarter. Yeah. Sets the tone for the Liberty, but they had other players contributing to me. Liberty just had more weapons offensively, more continuity defensively to win the series against the Aces. Very quickly, they will not get that three-peat, right, yeah. that, that we haven't seen since the inaugural four years of the WNBA, but an amazing season for the Aces nonetheless. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you think about a team that has a target on their back all season long, not just from winning last season, but from winning the season sure. before. Every other team in the league has been chasing the Aces. What have we talked about every offseason? How are teams going to build their roster to beat the Again. Aces? The mm -hmm. Aces have been the standard for the past two seasons. The Aces weren't able to fortify their roster very much. They did not have very much depth. They got Tiffany Hayes, which was fantastic, but they still struggled when it comes to depth. When you think about the Liberty, there was room for error. There were room for some of their superstars to struggle and then find their way. The Aces didn't have that luxury. Asia Wilson had a season that we have never seen yeah. before. Quite literally made history. It was amazing. It was. But that's also a lot of pressure on one player. Again, her margin for error was so slim, and she rose to the occasion every single time. Didn't always have help around her. Regardless, an incredible season for the Aces. Very quickly, give me one thing that you're watching for. Game five between the Sun and Lynx on Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Offense versus defense. But this is a Connecticut Sun team that found a ton of offense in game four. Ty Harris, what an incredible yes. performance from her. 20 points. I don't know if I'm looking forward to what defense is going to get more stops, which team is going to hit more threes, which team is going to bow up, a kind of knuck a few buck moment. Yes. Uh, all within reason. It's going to be chippy. It's going to be physical. It's going to be a lot of fun game. Game fives are always special. We heard Dijon A. Carrington say that with you on SportsCenter earlier today. Game fives are where they're at. We send it back to SportsCenter as we say goodbye from here in the WNBA studios. Half of the WNBA finals are set with the Liberty going back for their sixth time. Problem is, they've never won it before. Their history in the WNBA finals has been a little heartbreaking, starting with the first in 1997. Liberty Comet Cynthia Cooper was the one to undo them. She dropped 25. Houston beat the Liberty 65-51. That was the first one. And then 99, you might remember this shot and legendary call from our own Mike Green. They've got to go the length of the floor. Teresa Weatherspoon at the buzzer at three. Oh, she put it in. She put it in. And the Liberty win game two. What a finish. Teaspoon. The game winner, and it forced a game three from half court. But the Comets were too much in game three. Tata Thompson finishing through contact and won. Houston vanquishing New York as they did in the NBA that decade as well. Third time's the charm, right? No. Liberty 2000 again against the Comets. Game two, Cooper. That's 25. Big bucket in overtime, and that secured another title for the Comets. This series was over after two games.
It is amazing that this Liberty team, uh, an original WNBA franchise, and they've never won a championship. 2002 against the Sparks. Nikki Teasley, the iconic game winner for LA. Elation on the LA side, very different story on the other side for the Liberty who lose in two games. And then of course it happened again last year, 2023, this time against the Aces. Liberty trying to force a game five down one under 10 seconds to play. Liberty finding Courtney Vandersloot. The look mm -mm, doesn't even hit the rim. John Quell Jones puts it back in. And that just was as close to being a bucket as we could possibly get. But it came back out after the final buzzer there on um, Liberty Camp break their finals curse. Aces won that one three games to one. It is amazing how long they've been around for and they've not been able to break through again. Maybe this is the year as we hit. Also, credit to the fact that they have been as good as they've been for as long as they have right. been. Right, really close yeah. for a long, long time. And they're really, really good again this year.